Now, what's the difference between hunting through code for hours and hours and getting answers in seconds? Precision. In this video, I'll show you how to use Cursor's contextual references to laser focus your AI queries on exactly the right files, slashing through confusion and getting precise answers about your code base instantly. This feature might be the most powerful time saver in your entire development workflow. So let's get started. Okay, so we took a look at our code base references and how you can question your code base. Let's look into contextual references a little bit deeper. Now here we have the add context button and we've seen this before where we say add context. We can search for files by name. We could say, let's search all the HTML files, et cetera. And then we can ask a question specifically to the HTML files, right? Uh, we could say something like, which template system do these use? For example, I'm trying to find something you would query HTML about. Then here it uses the Jinja 2 template system, right? So, which is commonly used with Flask applications in Python. So what we're doing here is we're adding context. But I think more importantly is we're excluding context as well, right? So just as important as saying we want this context to stay within base, login, and register, what can be even more important sometimes is that we don't want all the Python files in there. We don't want JavaScript files in there. We don't want all these other things that might muddy up our results. We want to be focused and specific like a laser on certain files. And that's why we use things like this. Now, Cursor's context system is awesome because for one thing, if you have this open, right? So I have app.py open. So when I create a new chat window, it automatically just appends it in there because it figures you're probably going to ask something about the file that you have open. However, we, we sort of started to cover this in the last one. We can do an app sign here and we have files. Here's some different files we can use, rules, text, create prompt etc. We can also do folders and include an entire folder worth. Code. Now this one's interesting because in here, if you select code, you can actually look like on a method by method basis or function by function, whichever you want to call it. So you can look at things like, hey, here's a get db function. Maybe I just want to ask a question specifically about this function and nothing else. And you can see here that we have at get DB. So it creates this kind of custom at sign here that you can use. And it, it's a custom context. This is just within this get DB. You can say something like optimize this code for maximum performance, which it may not be able to do. Maybe this is the best it can do, but we can just say, Hey, look at this code and nothing else. And it says, Oh, Here's an improved version where we do write ahead logging, reduce disk IO, increase cache size, etc. So this is kind of a cool way to narrow down your context. Now let's look at here. We have all kinds of stuff. So if we go to Git, in order to provide better results for Git, cursor wants to sign in with GitHub, right? So this means it's going to go search the GitHub repository. Um, and within Git, we can see here pull requests, right? We can search through pull requests and ask questions about that. Like what the heck was this pull request? What does this affect? Um, or which pull requests were involved with the database, right? So we'll say cancel. Um, and you can even search for commits. What kind of commit, uh, questions can we come up with? Like which commit worked with the database or which commit? switch the databases over, et cetera. Let's look at what else we have. Notepads. So if we want to create notepads, we don't have any created here. We're going to cover that. We have summarized composers, cursor rules. So the cursor rules that we set up earlier, you can actually query those rules and ask about it. There's code base, which we covered. Linting errors. So if we get some linting errors, we can search through those and say, hey, what are these all about? What are our errors about? We can search the web and we can look at recent changes. So these are all contextual references. These are all different ways to 
uh, kind of narrow down the context. And like I said, this is important because we want to add in all of the files that we're talking about when we're having a conversation and we don't just want app.py in there. You know, we want all our templates in here. We want our static files in here, et cetera. Um, and like I said, it's, it's actually just as important to exclude things sometimes because that gives you a very narrow focused context for the LLM to work with. So you can ask a question and there's a higher likelihood you're going to get the right answer if you've included the right files that you're talking about and you've excluded a bunch of stuff that might create noise. So this essentially is what contextual references are in cursor. And it's a great feature. And once you start to really get to use it and get to know it, you'll like it. Contextual references is not just including what you need, but also excluding what you don't. By focusing your queries on specific files, functions, or pull requests, you'll get clearer and more accurate answers from Cursor. This targeted method turns hours of code exploration into seconds of conversation. If you want to learn more about how to leverage Cursor better and turn it into your ultimate coding companion, check out my course at CodeCloud. The link is in the description below. Let's take your AI skills to the next level.